Today on To The Point, one of the newest pros on Dancing with the Stars for season 28. I am so excited you guys are here. We want to thank, of course, Popcorn Talk and Dance Network for presenting us each and every week. But this is a guest that so many of you requested, and we finally were able to work out the schedule. Last minute, by the way. But we are thrilled to have him here. One of season 28, Dancing with the Stars, newest pros, Pasha Poshkov. I love it. You have the greatest name. Thank you. You really do. It sounds a little funny, no? No, I think it's great. And I love that on uh, the announcer on Dancing with the Stars calls you Pasha. Yes. Have you even noticed that? I've noticed. Uh, Sounds very British. Does sound very British. Pasha. It's like Pasha and Sasha. Yes. Well, actually, my passport name, like my full name is Pavel. Mm -hmm. So I don't think my parents realize because Pasha is kind of like... it's something like like cute name for your full name. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. It's so, like your so, nickname. And exactly, exactly. Sometimes you grow up and you, you don't use your nickname anymore. Exactly. So, like, I feel like my parents didn't really realize that um, my nickname is going to be Pasha. Then it sounds Pasha Pashkov. So it kind of was like an accident. It wasn't on purpose. You know what I mean? Yeah, it sounds like a great, it's a great, like, stage name, though. Stage like, name, yeah. Pasha Pashkov. It's fantastic. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you. You know, you and I had a great time just doing our own pre-show out in the hallway over here. Uh, We talked about a ton of stuff. But, you know, let's just kind of start in on Dancing with the Stars because everything is fresh. Um, You with Kate Flannery is just was a genius combination. So, you know, praise to Dina Katz for putting you two together. But... Um, we had your wife here, Daniela, probably about a month ago or so, and you know she talked a lot about you guys coming on the show. Um, you did not audition with Daniela because she was on tour with Derek Huff. Is correct. that correct? Yeah, correct. Who were you auditioning with? Uh, I was auditioning with my friend from New York. Okay. Yeah, her name is Yulia, so um, I asked her to help me out. Because you needed a partner, right? Of course, yeah. So what was it like doing the audition? Because a lot of dancers I know in this area, in Los Angeles, New York, they came in specifically for this audition. This was a very big deal. It was whispered about, actually. Really? Yes. Well, because I didn't live here, so I didn't hear the whispers. And um, it was great because I feel like the audition was exactly what the show needed. You know what I mean? Like the things that they asked us to do was very appropriate for the show. They asked us to teach a beginner, you know, like a person who never danced before, Mm -hmm. on camera, Mm -hmm. and to see what we can do with them in like 20 minutes, (gasps) you know? So So. they provided you, you had no idea who this person was? No idea. Like met that person that day for the first time, and they're like, please teach this person right now for 20 minutes on camera. That's a great idea. Yes. And then we were asked to do uh, two choreographies, two different styles, one ballroom and one Latin. Mm-hmm. And um, to do it to some like um, mainstream song, you know, choice. Yep. And um, then we had an on-camera interview just to see how we interact. And you need to see your personality, yes. all the good things. Um, what did you have to teach the beginner? Did you have to teach him like a cha-cha? Uh, anything you want. Anything, what did Literally, you choose? I chose tango. Oh, you went you went a lot harder because I always feel like cha cha is the entry um, ballroom dance. To on be dance honest with shows. you, cha cha is probably one of the hardest dances to teach. Isn't that interesting? Cha cha and rumba, yeah. And they do it all the time on dance shows. They're like, we're just going to give them a cha cha. Yeah. Um. So, do you think tango? You think tango is easier than to teach? Uh, um. I can't. Oh, sorry. I can't say that tango is easier to teach, uh, but cha cha is definitely not an easy dance because. It's a dance that you dance on um, straight legs. Mm -hmm. And I feel like people feel very awkward trying to do that. You know what I mean? It doesn't feel very natural. Yes, exactly. Because even like other dances, you know, like samba and jive, it's kind of like a little softer in the knees. So it feels more natural. And rumba and cha-cha on straight legs, you feel stiff and stuck. So they seem easy because the patterns seem not so fast and not so complicated. Mm -hmm. But technically, I feel like they're very hard. So interesting, too, when I think about this, because all of the shows, when they're teaching, oftentimes, whether they're dancers who are non-ballroom dancers, what to do, they usually go, we're going to do a cha-cha. Isn't that funny? I think it's just one of those names that kind of resonates with ballroom dancing, you know, and like one of those 
steps and a uh, New Yorker, you know, when people like open up and go like, ah. Yeah, you, we got this. Yeah, everybody when they try Very to like. Very recognizable. Yeah, when they try to like uh, mock Latin dancing, I mean ballroom dancing, what are you going to do? You're going to be like, oh, I'm doing ballroom, got you know. this or I got, I'm going to do my little. Yeah, yeah. like hip hop, you like, and then like Latin dancing, you go like, ah, cha, cha, cha. <laughs> I know, know this, yes. <laughs> I know this one dance from Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, that that is really, really interesting. I'm going to like kind of watch again because Cha Cha is always a week one dance too yeah. on Dancing with the Stars. It's done on So You Think You Can Dance over and over again. Yep. And look at that. I wonder if we started with a tango or something on Dancing on So You Think, what that would do. Because all these, all those dancers are well trained so, yep. that are walking in there. They're not necessarily ballroom trained. I'd like to see the difference. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with ballroom dancing is really partnering, you know, because a lot of other styles you can get away with being able to dance on your own. But so you think, if you think about it, all the styles that you do, you usually partner up. You rarely do solo dances, you know, mm -hmm. and I feel like what is good about no to know ballroom dancing is to you, you become like a good partner. You know how to partner somebody and make them look good mm -hmm. and kind of be in sync, in harmony, you know? So I feel like that's our strength as ballroom dancers. The lead and follow too, it's something, you know, I've taken a couple lessons, lead and follow, I struggle with the follow part. I have mm -hmm. no problem <laughs> with the leading part, but that that is a it's, a, it's a brain thing of like, kind of like learning and trusting that yeah. you're, you're gonna be fine. It's like, I need to learn, it's okay. But for us, it's very, I would say intimidating to be by ourselves on the floor because we're so used to dancing with somebody that when we're left on our own, you feel like you're missing somebody. You know, Do you even feel vulnerable too? Like I feel exposed almost. It's kind of like that, but you all, all really feel that you're missing something. Like that's really the feeling. You dance and you're like, where is that something that I'm, I'm missing something, right. you know? And that's something that is that other person. We just so, we don't dance solo ever in ballroom dancing. And you know here you saying? are in Dancing with the Stars and you're all over the place, like in holds, doing solos, doing styles outside of what, you know, you've been trained in and competing in. It's amazing. I mean, it's it's a fun experience, you know. Um, every week we do like different styles. We did opening numbers, we did jazz with Zach Woodley, you know, and we did um, some hip hop this week with Rodrigo. You know, it's like, it's just so cool to learn these other styles and pushes our boundaries. Um, I know we're learning a lot. I feel like right now, I feel like a little kid, like a sponge, and I'm just observing everything and absorbing it and loving it, like the camera work and learning the angles. I mean, I'm really learning a lot and uh, very grateful for this experience. Yeah, I mean, and I, I was just saying, I'm like, I watched the show this morning um, and I, I was like, how many numbers was Pasha in? And seven, you were seven. in seven numbers last night. Yeah. That's a lot. I mean, that's a lot to like know and absorb and like quick costume changes and everything else. This has got to be such a blast for you. Yeah, some of them were like running and changing as we run. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's you're fun. like, just throw it in the audience. Take my shirt. <laughs> we got another quick number coming up. So um, after that audition, and I know Daniela submitted her her tour dances. I was literally like, I think that obviously a dance with Derek Hoff should be a good recommendation that yeah. you can <laughs> probably handle the show. Um, but when did you when did you guys find out? Was it several months later, um, or was it shortly after you auditioned? Um, if we got it, if you got it, yeah, we got the official call with the final answer. I believe it was Friday. And I believe GMA with the reveal was like Tuesday or Wednesday, something like that. So it was like maybe about three or four days before the reveal of the cast. So it was like very tight. Very tight. And for you guys who are East Coast based, it's also, okay, we have to pick up our lives and go West. Yep, exactly. We literally just packed up like maybe five suitcases full of clothes and just relocated. Holy cow, that's big. Well, our well, stuff is like, all of our like major stuff is still in New York and uh, we still have the place there. Of course. But I think after the tour now, we're gonna be like fully relocating. Our car is here already and our clothes is here. All now right, just so need Los to move Angeles is gonna be your new, new place. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. We wanted to live here for a long time, mostly Daniela. Daniela really loves LA and I'm kind of a person, I'm comfortable anywhere where I am. Mm -hmm. So, but she really wanted to live here, but for a competitive career, New York was better for That's us. That's right. Because we have 
amazing energy there, lots of good teachers, uh, amazing couples. We're close to Europe where all our major competitions are. Mm -hmm. So flying to Europe from New York, we go to London. It's a lot harder. Five, five, six hours here. It's going to be a lot more expensive, longer travel. And here I feel it's a little bit more laid back in a competitive sure. ballroom industry. You know, it's like more commercial side. Yep. So competitive is not as competitive. So you don't feel as motivated. In New York, you walk into a studio with all these amazing couples and you're like, okay, I need to push. But when it's cold outside, you have nothing better to do. Let's go in a dance. Here, you're rehearse. like, I want to go tan. You know? I'm going to go to the beach. <laughs> Let's go hiking. Yeah, there's a lot of distraction in LA. It's totally different. Um, do you miss competing? I know it's it's a whole thing. I mean, you have to be all in when you're competing. This is not just like, let me casually do this. I can't say I miss competing because, let, let's put it this way. Um, I'll tell you a little story. So there's this book. It's called Thinking Body, Dancing Mind. This is the book that... You gave Kate Flannery. Yes. She told I me, did. and remember in the in our interview together mm-hmm. with Kate when we got press line, she talked yes. about it. Yes, yes, yes. So this is the book that I've been reading for years. This is one of my coaches suggested to me a long time ago. And it was just a, a, an amazing uh, guide for me mm-hmm. throughout my competitive career. And um, when um, I was talking in one of the interviews that I told like I, I talked about this book and then they called me back and they said thank you for the interview we're interviewing somebody else right now and we would like to put you online live right now and the author of that book was online yeah and wow. yeah so they, they were interviewing him and I mean I'm talking to the person who wrote the book who I literally used as my guide for like for the past 15 years of my life you know 17, 18 years of my life. Incredible. So for me, it was like a shock, you know, and I told him how much it meant to me. And then he said, do you have like, what are you up to right now? Do you have any questions or anything? And it was way before, like I even auditioned for Dancing with the Stars, you know, so we're still competing. And I told him, I was like, I feel that at some point in the near future, we will be wrapping up our competitive career. Mm -hmm. And I said, I am afraid of having to do my last competition ever. Like, I don't know how mm. that's going to feel. You know what I mean? Right. Having my last competition and making that decision that I'm ready to stop. And he said, he said, trust me, like, once you stop, it's not going to feel empty because you're, there is no vacuum. Like, your time is going to get filled up with something else, mm-hmm. something bigger, something better, you know? So he's like, like, don't worry about it. Just keep going. And Trust the that, right, believe yes, it. Yes, yes. And what happened is when he said that, I kind of like felt more relaxed. Mm-hmm. And um, what happened is we got Dancing with the Stars and that obviously eats up your time. So I cannot say I miss competing yeah. because first of all, we are, if you think about the way competing here, it's a different type of competing, mm-hmm. but it's still competing. And we are so busy you know, creating, choreographing, performing, learning, doing all these things that your time is filled up and there is no time left to miss something else. You That's know? right. And same thing happened when we used to be 10 dancers, right? So when we used to compete in 10 dances, which is like two styles, five dances, Latin, five dances, ballroom. And um, at some point, we decided to focus just on Latin. Mm-hmm. And that was also a tough de- decision because we love both styles. And I always thought that, how am I going to stop competing in one style and do just one? But the moment you shift, you feel that you just go deeper into that style. Shifting your energy. Yeah. And you don't feel like there's an empty space. Again, there is no vacuum. It just gets gets filled up. Mm -hmm. So, and same thing happened right now with competing. I can't miss it because I feel so busy with other things that there is no time to miss it so yeah there's been no time for you to even sleep you were saying no no that's why i'm drinking coffee <laughs> drinking right now coffee. to stay awake <laughs> i've been tea because i've had laryngitis all week but uh, i mean you really had i mean from the show last night you grabbed some food you this morning you were at children's hospital you were rehearsing and you're here and you've got plans tonight yes yeah there's not there hasn't been there's no time to even breathe is there no 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 there hasn't been yet a single day off since we started the season um, but you know what? It's just, ooh, I'm so grateful and so blessed that I'm here that 
I don't care. You know what I mean? If I have to do oh, 25 yeah, it's a dream hours come a day, true. it's a dream come true. So And you're living it with your wife. You don't often get that where you get to do it together. This is the best part. Like, this is the best part. The fact that, I mean, we both wanted it for a long time. That, But the fact that we got it at the same time, same season, I mean, it's just, it's alignment, you know, it's just so amazing. Are you going on tour now? Because I know Daniela was going on tour. Are you Daniela is going on tour for sure. As of now, I'm not sure okay. exactly what is happening. I think there is maybe some part of the tour. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there's yeah, people are out for a couple of days and come and fill in. Yeah. There are just some things they can't reveal yet. <laughs> I love it. A good mystery. <laughs> but you might be there. Maybe. We'll throw that we'll put that in the maybe category. Yes. Okay. I'll that. take that. That's good. Um you know, your partner made an impact on so many people. Obviously, already had a great fan base with being Meredith on The Office because hilarious character. And I know that you and Daniela are huge fans of The Office. But tell me about the moment where you met Kate Flannery because she makes me laugh, she makes me smile, and I just love how open she was to the whole process. Well, first of all, I think what's really cool is that Kate walking into this competition and finding out that I was her partner and she was so cool about it because I'm the new pro, you know, on the show. And she was just so trusting. You know what I mean? Like, is she, somebody else would say, well, do I trust this person? Does he have enough experience? Because she doesn't know me, you know, but she was so trusting from, from the first second, you know, she's completely like, whatever you basically do, she, she would do it, you know, whatever I decide, she would do it. And I think, that trust is is really what helped but um first couple of practice i wasn't really teaching i was like kind of like Kate Flannery. yeah because we, we we are huge fans of the office and i've probably rewatched uh the whole show beginning to end at least i don't know five six seven times are you listening to the office podcast no, there's, I just I just don't have the time. Yeah, I was like, but, once you guys have some time, you know, maybe if you're out on tour, maybe um, there's an office podcast so you can watch the show. And then Angela and um, I'm blanking on her name, Jenna Fisher. Yes. Do they, a podcast together yes, and they and go they, through to the episode. Yes. And they're talking like all the details and everything. It's happened. so great. Yes. I've been doing it. And that's so why I watch. I go on Netflix. I watch an episode and then I go and listen to the podcast. It's great. So you'll that's love amazing. it. I would I would definitely do it for sure when I have the time. Yeah. Well, I, and I, I just want to go back to, to one thing you just said. And it was something that I said, too. So many contestants would come on here and be like, why didn't I get like Val um, getting the new guy on, you know, is like. Oh, gosh. But I love the first thing she said that came out of her mouth. She's like, he's the perfect pro for me. And I thought, this partnership's going to go great. Because already, she's just like, you're the coach. That's it. And that's what you need to do no matter who you get. But you know what? It's, <clears throat> I mean, I believe in alignment of things, you know? Like, when things work out for a reason. So what happened is, um, I think Daniela already told the story about how we met, we met Kate during her interview. You guys were watching, I think, upstairs. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, and... we're, yeah, it was before the GMAs and before the reveal of the cast. We had a little meet and greet and upstairs in our hotel room, we're watching The Office as usual, right? We'll walk into the room, we'd always put it on and it just goes on mm -hmm. and on. And we're watching the one of the episodes and we go downstairs for meet and greet and uh, Sasha goes, guys, it's Meredith right there, you know? So... <laughs> So that was like the whole story. So we're like, what is happening? And we we realized that she's on the show. So the moment I saw her, first of all, we came up to her. We said that we're huge fans. And she's just the most humble human being you can meet, you know? And we were literally, we connected right away. We had no idea we we're going to be each other's partners, you know? She didn't know I'm going to be her partner. I didn't know she's going to be my partner. But we just clicked. And we probably talked for like an hour, you know? Like the whole time. Wow. So... And after we left the meet and greet, I was like, I hope I get Kate as a partner, you know? And I just put it out there in the universe and I was like, I hope I get Kate as a partner. And then I'm flying to LA, I walk into the rehearsal studio and that's our official meeting for first first look. <laughs> I think probably both of you probably felt great. We already know that we get along because that is half the battle of like personality wise kind of clicking into each other. Yeah. And then going, great, I love her. So this we're going to have fun. 
And that's what I'm saying. It's like what, what I'm saying is that we clicked over there. Then the next day during the GMAs, there is like a picture of the whole cast and literally Kate and Danny and me, we have like a little family picture, family portrait. We're standing on each other's side. I It almost l- looks like as if we knew we're going to dance together. Like it just... The universe knew. Yeah. Yeah. So it worked out perfectly. You'll have to get that framed. Yeah. Get it put in your new L.A. home because <laughs> that's great. Um, talk about what the rehearsal process was like with Kate. I thought um, one of the greatest assets that Kate brought to the table was her acting ability because you never want to have to teach your partner like you, you need to perform. That's hard to do. She came to the table with a really strong set of skills right there. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I didn't have to focus on that so much because that's what Kate had, you know what I mean? So for me, that was the easy part. I really had to work mostly on technique, cleaning it up, uh, making sure she knows the choreo, she knows the timing really well, that Mm -hmm. she feels comfortable. And the rest, I think, she brought to the table on her own. Like, she really... um, she really wanted to understand the character of the dance or the story. So that's what I had to explain to her. So every step kind of had the meaning, um, whatever. Sometimes it would be like some something simple, uh, but sometimes it would be something deep, you know, like some like story that, okay, this is what's happening in this dance, you know. But it or, gives her purpose. Yes, and when the moment she had a purpose, the rest, it was up to her. She would really get into it and she would use her acting skills. So that was easy. So I didn't have to tell her like what to do. So it's fake. Right. I just had to give her the purpose, and the rest was up to her, and she did it. So, you know, I one of the big things this season too, and Len complimented you over and over, deservingly so, is uh, how much content you brought to a dance. And uh, you know, this season has been a little bit more of getting back to ballroom basics, which I think has been a imp- very important focus. Um, but even when you were given a, a dance like jazz, which is very widely open to interpretation, you still added in those elements of ballroom and Latin that there were wonderful, recognizable steps for the audience and for Len. Um, what was sort of your plan of attack when choreographing this season? Well, first of all, I was trying to stick to to the style of the dance. Of course, jazz, as you said, it's a little different because we have all this freedom and flexibility to do whatever we want. But in general, other dances, we had a specific style. So I was trying to stick to that style as much as possible. And of course, you know, when you choreograph, there's so many things that it goes into it. Like, first of all, it's the music itself. You know, um, you listen to the music, you get inspired to do something to this note or this lyric, you know, number one. Number two, um, staging, you know, you kind of, you have some kind of a creative, you see how, what's happening creatively. So that affects the choreography. Then you look at the ability of your partner. So obviously things that came naturally to Kate, I would try to use it and abuse it, you know, from week to week. (laughs) So if it's like, if it works for her and good, let's use it again. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying like the same step, but kind of like, because Kate, for example, she was, she's very light on her feet. She has this bubbly, very bouncy personality Mm -hmm. and dances like quick step and you know, like those dances. things that, yeah. yeah, Those things that kind of has that energy were so easy for her. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, easy because everything was hard for everybody they had to learn but it had she probably got a yeah i was gonna say she probably got a comfort level with it faster than exactly something else um where it doesn't have that lightness to it which i understand because when you have to do like rumba you know you have to be like completely opposite you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. there's like no bounce at all so you have to make sure you stay leveled and use your hips It's, it's different you know but things like jazz it was good because um First of all, it was something that she really enjoyed, like the song, you know, that meant something for her. And she connected, it was um, connected to her sister that passed away mm-hmm. earlier this year, you know. So there was the there was a meaning, there was a connection, and um, you, you could feel that she enjoyed it a lot more. So on the harder weeks, dances that maybe she struggled with a little bit more, how did you get her through? Because I've always said, and I ask this over and over again, the mental game of the week to week at Dancing with the Stars is hard. Your body hurts. You know, maybe you're discouraged by what you heard at the judging table, whatever that is, You but you have to go, it's a new week, we have a new dance. Um, so in those hard moments, how are you getting Kate through? Well, we had a motto, which was uh, 
one week at a time, one dance at a time. Yeah. First of all, we did not look uh, past that. You know, we kind of like, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Otherwise it gets too overwhelming. You know, let's stick to this week, this dance. And then it just goes to like, let's stick to today. Like today we're just learning the steps. You know what I mean? Like real basic. Yeah, yeah. Ju ju just like the blueprint of the dance, you know? And then tomorrow we try to connect it with the music, you know, try to do it full speed. And then the day after that, let's add the design and styling, then add the technique. So you literally go day by day and you kind layer of break. Layer by layer. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise it gets too overwhelming. So if we started with one week at a time, I think by the time we finished because of the fatigue of the body and as you said, you know, mentally it's so overwhelming that you kind of have to just stay focused. Okay, what are we doing today? Just that. And you just have to focus on like very small little one aspect of the dance because otherwise it just, it, it's just too much. It's just too much. It's a lot. And then, you know, you get to the weeks now where like, we're adding a second dance for you. Exactly. And you know, for some, and you were just, we were talking about this actually before the show, even the best dancer in the competition, they struggle to having a second dance. It's not just like, oh, this, you know, the, the people that don't have the dance experience, you know, are struggling. No, everybody's struggling. Doesn't matter what level they're at. Absolutely. It's uh, a lot to learn um, and also depends what kind of dances you get, right? Like your dances can be so polar opposites of each other. Mm -hmm. You can get one something like jive, balanced, and energetic, and then the other one is gonna be like tango, flat, and passionate. And it's like, you, Opposite you have to brain. switch. Oof. You almost have to treat one rehearsal as two separate days. Like you do three hours of one thing, go have a little 15 minute, 20 minute lunch. I don't know, meditate, breathe. And then next is like a different day. You have to switch, like yeah. you just, you can go like back and forth and jump around. Um, you were talking also about the the last minute switches when the music changes slightly or you need to, there's a set piece or something, you need to change up the choreography. How are you encouraging Kate going, we got a little change here? You know, that's, that's hard because you're thinking, I'm already nervous about the show. Yes, it's almost, um, you don't present it as if it's a, uh, switch that needs to be done. You almost go like, um, let's try this. Uh, I think this might be better. <laughs> it's all in the approach of how you're telling them. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Kate, if you're listening, I'm giving away secrets right now. So close your ears now. <laughs> no. um, yeah, you have to basically present it as if it's part of the plan uh, because you cannot... Um, it gets intimidating, you know what I mean? Like for me, if I would have to do a last minute switch, would be stressful, but because this is something I do, I would probably be able to handle, but for a celebrity that is not non-dancer, it's, you. if you're being told that you need to change choreo last second, it's it's stressful, you know, because for the whole the week, you, you, you learn in some, I'm not saying you have to change the whole choreo, but even let's say eight beats, you know what I mean, for like, I don't know, five seconds, but it's already so in your muscle memory by that time that to change and you have to stay focused and you come out and it's live and millions of people are watching you and it's live audience and people are screaming and people are yelling your name. It's so many distractions. It's you know, so loud. And, and Len is looking, you know, under the microscope if you're doing the correct footwork. So it's like, it's a lot of pressure. So on top of that, to change something last second is definitely stressful. So it's about the approach. If you don't present it as if it's a change, if you find a way to go around it, it's a little smoother. If you directly be like, we're changing this, I think everybody would freak out. Have a meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, no. Yeah, and then that that's all they're gonna think about in the dance, like, oh my gosh, the change is coming, here's the eight counts. Yeah. And you're gonna fall out completely of your performance. Yeah. Because exactly. your head's elsewhere. Yep. Yeah, that's not easy whatsoever. Um, did you feel the pressure being you and Daniela, the new pros? Because Dancing with the Stars fans are very, very passionate. They're very, very passionate about their pros as well. Um, being the new kids on the block, did you feel any of that? Like, oh, we're coming in. We're the new people. First of all, I'm very happy that Dancing with the Stars fans are passionate because that's what we want. Yes. You know, we want passionate fans. And... Um, to be honest with you, it all happened so fast that I don't think we had time to think about it. That's good. Because as as we said, we found out three days before <laughs> the show started. I mean, not before the show started, before. But the GMA announcement, yeah. yeah. 
and then we had to move and we right away had to jump into rehearsals we had to prepare the first dance and we did not have the time to sit down and like think we couldn't overthink these things mm -hmm. you know and then the show already started and by that time you're in it you're in it you're in it and you might be new but you cannot like you don't first of all you don't have time to even like hire realize guy. that yeah <laughs> yeah you kind of have to jump in and just do your job you know so i think i'm just so focused on doing my job that i didn't have a chance to overthink the little things you know or like the things that would stress you out mm -hmm. you know what i mean because these things like you're not in control you're out of control of these things you cannot control how people perceive you you know how people like think about you the only thing you're in control of is what you're doing. That's right. So, like, if you think about that, you're stressing yourself out, but you're not helping the situation. So, I kind of like, let's focus on what I'm here to do, which is do my job. That's right. And I knew coming into this, um, I kind of knew the direction in which I wanted to go with, like, with the choreography and everything. Obviously, I didn't know who my celebrity is going to be. But you had be, a plan, a general plan. But, but overall, I knew the direction in which I want to, like, take like my approach, my choreography, you know what I mean? So therefore, um, that helped a lot, you know? Like I didn't feel lost. I felt like I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Well, it shows, honestly, because it's been a breath of fresh air just seeing that because Dancing with the Stars kind of lost its way for a couple seasons. Um, so many set pieces. I love that we're doing like a theme kind of every other week and you're going back to basics and then building up again for Disney week and then, you know, getting smaller build back up for for halloween week and everything doesn't feel like a fusion anymore because it's, sometimes i'd be like was that a rumba or was that a contemporary piece or was that a freestyle like it got really confusing and i know how to spot the styles i mean i think of the average viewer at home is probably like i don't know i think that just was jazz what was it i think it's amazing because for example um let's say if we're watching figure skating at the olympics right mm -hmm. I think everybody who is watching it at, at home will know what a triple axel is. That's right. Why? Because the commentators was all, would always point it out and say, wow, he just did it and he landed it perfectly and perfect balance and he's probably going to get lots of points for this, right? You know it's so big and epic. Y you know what to expect. You know what you're looking for. If you watch Ice Dancing, you know when they do the parallel section, you're looking for the togetherness and musicality and all these aspects, right? And um, I feel that the audience wants to be part of judging the couple mm -hmm. you know what i mean like not necessarily like with a mark but they want to see like they yeah, know you want to be able to say yeah, something you want to yeah. be like able to say oh okay well this is this dance and this dance requires this set of skills or like i know what the frame is on this one i know what the hold is exactly exactly yeah. so like if you expect it to be a ballroom dance you kind of want to see frame <clears throat> at least half or majority of the dance and then you will be able to say, was that a clean, good frame or not? You know what I mean? Right. Or uh, like as we, we said, if it's Roomba, you want to make sure that the legs are straight and the hips are moving and the arms are fluid, you know, all those things. So when you're at home, you're going to be like, well, that looked choppy or the hips were stiff. And then when judges give scores, you at least realize why they're giving it, why they're giving those scores. Right. So I feel... Um, the fact that the show is now talking about these things and their how-tos that Keo and Daniela are demonstrating. I love that they did that this season. Yeah. So. I, I think it was honestly a wonderful breakdown of like, this is what we're looking for in a Viennese waltz. And I think for the average viewer, they're probably like, oh, well, that's why Len is being hard on this couple mm -hmm. because they didn't do that one element that he was looking for. Exactly. It's great. Exa exactly, yeah. So you kind of like want to have um, some kind of like a baseline for judge and of course like all other things like the acting and the presentation and the energy and whatever it is you know like all of that is extra points on top but mm -hmm. at least a baseline for what you expect of the dance you know so you're understanding the content of it um how did danny sort of help you in rehearsals and choreography and maybe a couple notes when watching you and kate perform well first of all um daniela was like the most supportive friend wife uh partner team member <laughs> team member yes um she was there for us all the time and um we did choreography together in our living room that's like our spot where we do our choreography you know we clear out the space we don't need too much you know a little bit but we'll play the music we'll play around with the choreo we discuss the like oh okay this sounds like it should be smooth part oh this is like a pickup okay let's do something so we really create 
And we did that with our choreography for our shows too. Mm -hmm. We created in our living room, you know, because when you're in the studio, you come in and you kind of feel time pressure and this and that and didn't work out for she us. She said the same thing to me. She yeah, said the time yeah. pressure thing. Yeah, she's like, in our living room, we can just, it's free flowing and it's not stressful. That's it, exactly. We can like go and sip coffee, you know, and then um, go back to thinking things like, when your mind is relaxed, the flow is better, you mm. know? And for me, like, that's the most important thing in the choreography is that it has a nice flow. If it feels like it's forced, you're forcing something in, you're like, I need this, and you're forcing it in it, it, it never, it's never good, you it's know? It's not authentic, that's why. Yeah. It's yeah, not so genuine. You, yeah, so you just want to, like, feel the flow. So so we would, like, choreograph uh, all these numbers together in our living room, you know? And then, of course, I would teach it to Kate, and then when it's at the point... Um, when we can kind of dance it beginning to end, mm -hmm. then then you would look at it and she would give pointers like, okay, I think this needs to be more or less or stuff like that. So she was there with me the whole time. Well, you guys really are great team members. I interviewed her um, when she was on the road on Derek's tour and she said, you know, it really was Pasha that kind of pushed me to go and take the tour to begin with. She said, I wasn't sure. And he's like, no, you have to do this. Like, there's no question. Um, and so it's kind of nice that she's able to support you with Kate and, you know, just giving notes and going, go team, because that's what it's about, especially where you're in the same industry with her. Of course, yeah. And um, it just felt right, you know, like about uh, the music video Natural. Yes. That, um, uh, we just won a just, World Choreography Award last night. Yes, so same thing. It was like a last minute thing when Daniela was asked to do it. And we had a very important competition coming up in England. And it was like a week away. And it's like that week when you really prepare, you do rounds, competition, simulation, everything, you know. And this is when Derek was shooting the video. And Daniela was asked to do to dance with By him. By Shirley Bellis, who referred her. Yes, of course. Hello. Shirley is just such a huge influence in our life. I and uh, I saw Corky and Mark last night, too. Yeah, she just, I mean, she opened our minds and so many doors for us. It's unbelievable. And um, Shirley called and she said, like, you should do it. And then he was like, but I have this competition. And she goes, no, no, you need to do it. And Shirley I, even knew, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I said the same thing. I was like, it feels right. Go and do it. And now you see this video won the award. And I mean, that video was went viral and was so popular. And, and people still right now to this day post on their Instagram stories and always tag Danny. I see just like so many people still watching, re-watching, re-sharing. It's a beautiful yeah, yes. it, it is. It really is amazing. I, I would say the Derek Huff phenomenon is amazing. I'm always in awe of like what he's creating and doing and everything. But um, for you guys, I mean, even going back to meeting Derek, uh, doing World of Dance was a real game changer for you guys, wasn't it? It was. It was huge. It was huge for us. First of all, it was a new experience. <clears throat> it was like a first official TV. Yeah, a little like, taste. Experience. Yeah. yeah, and. Um, I would say that that first round was probably the most stressful thing I've ever done in my entire life. Uh, and I've competed in my entire life. You You've know? been in Blackpool. Yes. <laughs> Many and times. For us, that is the biggest thing. But when you have one minute and 15 seconds, and even though it's not a live show, but it is, you really get only one chance. It's not like they're going to let you try another time and just get one chance. And you have uh, Derek Neo and J-Lo just right in the center, a few feet away from you. It's intimidating. Yeah. It's intimidating. So that made us stronger, for sure. After I've done it, I was like, okay, now I can do anything. That's really what I felt like. I felt invincible after that. I was like, oh, I love that. I can do anything now. So it was like a great experience, and it gave us a lot of exposure. And, of course, I think it helped us with getting Dancing with the Stars as well because – now we had both experience in ballroom industry and a little bit of commercial side of the dance. Television. Television. So Dancing for camera. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's like it all added up together. Yeah, it's it's interesting, too, because a lot of people um, who didn't make it to the final rounds on World of Dance have seen tremendous success uh, just from doing the show. So I, when people go, oh, well, I, you know, I only made it to the cut or, oh, I only made it to duels, I'm like... Don't think about that. Think about what's coming 
next because people are going to recognize you or be more familiar with your work. And even just the online familiarity is tremendous. It really is. It brings new fans to the table. Of course. And I think that um, a lot of these shows, reality TV shows that I'm watching, it's if you make your mark in something, it doesn't really matter what kind of placement you got. Like same thing with America's Got Talent and all these shows. As you said, there's only one winner, only one champion. But there are so many other people who showed to the world what they're capable of. And I'm sure they find their own new ways, their own new connections. So it's really not necessarily about winning. It's about the exposure and... Uh, and how you utilize that yeah. exposure. Um, new opportunities and things like that. You can't wait for the opportunities to come to you. You have to start you know, putting yourself out there more and in different ways too, constantly creating and reinventing yourself, so. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I do have some fan questions, so I do wanna make sure we get to these because we had some great ones that came in our Facebook group. If you guys wanna join it, it's Dance Dish with KB. Come and join us because we talk about every single dance show. All right. Um, All right, we'll start with Zoe. And Zoe wants to ask, what was it like coming onto the show as a completely new pro with other pros who've been working together for years? It's a little bit, I was talking about the fan side of it, but when you're the new coworker, what was that like, you know, coming in and working with people that have been on the show 10 seasons or more? Well, the thing is that, <clears throat> first of all, we know a lot of these people. You know, so it didn't feel like it was completely new because, for example, let's say Val. Um, I I know Val for as long as I've been in America because the moment I moved, we were in the same age category competing. We're the same. We were born the same year. So therefore, we had all the competitions together. You know, we went to the same birthday parties. We had all the same friends. So like we kind of like in New York, we were all in the same group. So therefore, like, I know Val and uh, a lot of other people from different places. So therefore, it's it didn't feel like we were strangers and everybody welcomed us right away. And um, it it, it was a very smooth transition. I cannot say uh, like we had any problems. Didn't feel awkward or anything. Didn't feel awkward. No, you're not not like the new kid in the lunchroom, you know, at school. (laughs) No, No, it was very supportive, very supportive. Everybody's very like especially during the live like before when we're rehearsing we're rehearsing in different studios Mm -hmm. you know like everything happens behind the closed doors so you're not really sure what the other person is doing what they're choreographing but then when it was the first live show that's when i really felt like okay these people are here we're a team we're a family because everybody on the live show supports each other and and pushes each other to do better and like there is like a lot of positive energy because everybody understands them pressure and uh how high the stakes are you know and like you you want everyone to do well yeah so so you really become like a team player yeah Yeah. you don't want to see people out there have a meltdown on the ballroom floor i don't even want to see it as a viewer honestly because even when someone forgets four counts of a dance i get stressed out for them i'm like oh because they're going to think about that instead of all the good stuff that they did around it you know of course yeah you want people to do well all right um this is from Chantel. She wants to know, how did you find the balance between creating wonderful traditional ballroom and Latin dances with a lot of technique that are still wonderful and exciting? Hmm. I feel I almost feel like Kate was kind of like that great balance of it. Like when you're given a partner like Kate, who's like, I'm a performer, I'm funny, I have no problem like acting. I felt like that almost comes together with your technique. I think, I think right? you're absolutely right. Yeah, because... Um, yeah, I was making sure that we have enough uh, good content, and uh, she did take care of the excitement of it, you know. So she I, was I think so natural out, perfect, out there. Yeah. She really was, and I, I thought um, on, also having like a comedy background, and I think we had talked about this in the press line. I thought, you know, she is comfortable moving her body in ways because she does a lot of physical comedy when you watch her on The Office and things like that. And you know that she did like all her stunts, right? Like yeah. when she gets hit by by a car. On the by, office. By Michael Scott on the office. And when she's doing uh, planking and Dwight. Um, <laughs> yeah, so like when, when she falls, you know, like when, when Dwight is with his uh, fire extinguisher, right? Like, yep. So so it's, uh, she did it all herself, you know, so she did those stunts herself. So she, um, she's really good at falling. 
<laughs> but she has a physicality. And and falling safely, which is very good. Very you know? good. We yes. like that. Yeah. So yeah. So it's so it's physical comedy. So it's still expression of your. Uh, it's through body language. So you're still expressing yourself through body language, which is great to begin with. Now we just kind of have to channel it, you know, in the right direction. Right. Because there is an understanding of how the body moves when you're doing yeah. physical comedy. Just add a little more technique to it, a little framework. Um, let's see. Oh, this is from Marilyn. What do you find the greatest challenge to be for a dancer who performs on competition reality dance programs? I like this question. What's the greatest challenge to be uh, for you um, as someone who performs on competition reality dance programs? Um, well, the biggest challenge specifically, you talking about Dancing with the Stars? We could talk about either because um, maybe one thing specific to Dancing with the Stars and one thing well, specific to, to Dancing to with the dance. Stars is that <clears throat> I feel that I do not feel that it is about me. I feel that it is 100% about the, the celebrity. So... My job is to make my partner in this season, it was Kate, uh, to make sure that she does her best, that she looks her best. And kind of like she's the diamond and I'm the setting, you know what I mean? Like I need to frame her so well and present her to the world so well that it's almost, you have to forget about yourself that you are competing or, you know what I mean? So you yes. have to think that like everything is about her. Like there cannot be any selfishness about no it ego. like no ego you yeah. cannot be thinking about because if you think about it um i'm sure that judges when they watch that they okay of course they watch the like the whole thing mm -hmm. the whole production right like if it's extra dancers or if no extra dancers they're watching the couple but i'm sure that their attention 95 percent of the time is on the celebrity mm -hmm. watching what they're doing so you kind of have to forget about yourself because obviously like we're trained dancers. We're going to do our technique and our steps correctly in any case, you know, because right. we've been doing it our whole life. So you really have to forget about yourself and just make sure that they do well. So that was for me, um, I would say like, um, like if that's the challenge, the challenge is to, to completely just refocus because that's the difference between World of Dance and Dancing with the Stars because World of right. Dance, it was me competing. You know what I mean? It was like Daniela and I, it was us competing against other dancers, other styles. You know what I mean? So there's like ballroom against hip hop and couple against team or soloist. So stakes are high. Yeah. So yeah. so there you feel that it is you need to show yourself. Yeah, right? and the judges on that show too will tell you, like, we need more from you or we are looking for something else. Exactly. They're very specific on exactly. that show. And in this case, it's like, I don't feel that it is me. I feel that it is Kate. You know what I mean? So it's like, you just, your whole focus goes towards the celebrity. So I think that's the biggest difference and the biggest challenge. Like, you just need to remember, like, what is this show about? This show is about the celebrity learning how to dance. You know what I mean? So it's all about them and you need to completely change your focus. Really good point on that. Um, one final question from Maria. Um, how did you feel? This is about last night. Um, dancing in the numbers that were outside of your style, like the in sync number. How was that whole experience? It was uh, really cool. And um, I like the group numbers. And especially I like them because the rehearsal process is so much fun. Because when we, like, for eight weeks, um, it was, uh, we were rehearsing with Kate and we were in, in obviously in like opening numbers and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, but most of the time it is, uh, two of us and the camera in the room. But for this week I was, we were rehearsing the whole week with a bunch of people. So it was just like a fun experience rehearsing. You know what I mean? You, you spend the whole week with other pros, you know, with your friends. It's always like a lot of laughter and everything. It's like great group energy. Yeah. And then also when you go and perform those numbers, you also feel that group. And so even though it was like out of um, my comfort zone, out of my style, but as I said, like this is learning experience for me as well. And I enjoy doing other styles. I enjoy learning. Um, and everybody's also very helpful. Like for example, if I'm coming more from a uh, ballroom background, right? Daniel and I, we help, um, some other pros with like more traditional Latin and ballroom technique, you mm -hmm. know? And then um, I got help from other pros who are like very versatile in other styles, you yep. know? So like when we're doing 
hip hop or jazz, I would ask questions like, oh guys, w what are you trying to do here? What you know, so we help each other out. They help me like get at the choreo uh, if I need help or like how to, like what to do with like technique and other styles. So I feel like now there's a good balance to like, we're helping each other out. So that was that was really cool. Yeah, and it was a great theme too. I loved the the boy band girl group theme. I thought it was really well done. I mean, well the, 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 those uh, those songs were. I mean, it's epic, you know, because you you grow up listening to these songs. So now you get to dance, and you really feel like you in the you really feel like you in the boy band. So it's pretty cool. Oh, that's <laughs> great. I'd love to be in a girl group. <laughs> All right. Well, we have to wrap up. Believe it or not. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? It goes by you really just... fast. Literally, we're out of time. Look at zero 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 zero. Wow. I know. I feel like we could talk for another hour because I have a whole set of other questions. But I think next time you're on the show, it's you and Daniela together. Sounds great. Uh, doesn't that sound like fun? Sounds we'll amazing. totally do it. Um, congratulations on a really wonderful first season. Thank you. I know people have loved watching you and Danny, and it's been a pleasure having both of you on the show. So come back anytime. Seats open for you. And if anyone's not following you yet on social media, tell them in that camera right over there where they can find you. Handle at Pasha Pashkov on Instagram and it is Pasha Pashkov 86 on Twitter. I think so. That sounds good. I believe so. I believe that's right. I've been tagging you a lot in the last yeah, two hours. I promise I'm going to get much better at Twitter. I'm really new to it but I'll get on top of it. It's a learning curve. You're, you're good at yeah, it. You, I, yeah. I've seen the retweets. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. We want to thank Dance Network, Popcorn Talk, and of course, remember, for all of your dance news, check out dancenetwork.tv. We'll be back next week with another fun live show. See you all next week. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network.